everybody, and welcome to this edition of HKM Sports Talk. I'm Tom Nappy. Joining us on the show in just a bit, we're going to have Jared Keane from the Metro West Daily News and Andy Barron from IFM 101.3. But before that, let's take a look at the Week 1 Hopkinton Hillers Spring Sports Highlight Package. Here's the first highlight package of the spring season. This past Monday, Hillers baseball took on Medfield. Medfield struck first in the top of the first. Larry Sacklad had the call. He's gonna start out of the stretch. Here's a fly ball to center field. And that's over the head of the center fielder. That could be four. And it is. I heard Coach Simos warn the outfielders that the ball would skid. A one to nothing game heading to the bottom of the second, but the Hillers' bats got going. Mike Bernie. There's a base hit into right field. That run's coming to the plate. And he slides in safe. Score is tied. Cam Mulvaney. There's a little nubber over to Goodman. Picks it up and he throws it wide. He threw that ball wide. Mr. Pepperdine. A 3-1 to one Hiller's lead into the top of the third. Medfield responded. Again, Josh Fisher has a great move over to first base. And there it is. Oh, he had him picked off. Had him dead. There's a fly ball in the left field. Runner's going to tag Palmer. He scores easily, and it's three to two. A three to two game into the top of the fourth, and a nice pickoff happened. First getting a little extra. There it is. You're done. See you later. Go home. You got picked off. It remained a three to two Hillers lead until the sixth. Here's a ground ball, and that's through in the right field. Here's a ribby for Andrew Gone. He's got a big grin on his face. I gotta believe. And it's four to two, Hopkinton. Four runs for Hopkinton, two for Medfield. That would be the last run of the game. Hillers baseball takes it four to two and improves to two and zero oh on the season. Hillers softball also battled Medfield this past Monday. Scoreless game into the bottom of the first. Hunt deals. This is hit high in the air, right side, and caught. Runner from third is going to try to tag the throw in. Not in time. It's 1-0 Hillers. A sacrifice RBI flyout for Harrigan. Run already in for the Hillers. CD gets a piece of this up the left side. Bobbled by the third baseman and a run scores. So CD reaches on the error. De Simone comes around to score. Kester up to third. It's 2 0 Hillers. A 2 0 Hillers lead. Hopkinton added more in the bottom of the second. There's a strike. Runner taking off to third, and she's safe. And now the ball gets by, and she's going to try to score, and will. Make it a 3 to nothing lead for the Hillers. And this is hit in the air over to right field, and that's going to get down for a hit. That was nearly out of the ballpark. And Kristen McCluskey rounding second, heading to third, and she is safe. A triple for Kristen McCluskey. 
And this is hit high in the air, left side, and caught. McCluskey going to try to tag and score, and she will with ease. A sacrifice RBI flyout for De Simone. It was a 5-3 Hillers lead into the bottom of the fourth, and the Hopkinton bats absolutely exploded. Heels. And this is hit in the air past the reach of the shortstop. One run is in to score. McCluskey heads to third. And it's an RBI single. And now advancing to second is going to be Desmone. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Up the right side, gloved by the first baseman. She steps on the bag, gets the out, but another run scores. A job well done by Harrigan, gets the sacrifice RBI ground out. Set to deal, and this is up the left side, that'll get through, Kester around to score, and it's a 9-3 game, this is going to roll all the way back to the wall, the center fielder had trouble tracking it down, and Harrigan's going to try to score now, and she'll come around to score, CD to third, and the throw gets into left field! And Cedia is going to stay put at third. Move it down. And this is ripped in the left field. That'll get down for a hit. And a run will score. And now continuing on to second is Morse. And RBI double. Set to deliver. And this is up the middle, past the reach of the second baseman. Being waved around is Chevery. She'll come around to score. And now the runner behind her is going to come around to score. Jurasek also in to score. A two RBI double for McCluskey. Nine runs in the bottom of the fourth. And Hillers scored another run in the bottom of the fifth to put the mercy rule into effect. Hopkinton comes away with a 15-3 victory. Hiller's softball is now 2-0 on the season. Hiller's girls lacrosse took on Westwood, and Westwood went on a tear and took the game 19-2. Hiller's girls lacrosse had one win and two losses on the season, heading into their Thursday night road matchup with Medfield. This past Tuesday, Hopkinton boys and girls track and field took on Ashland. The Hopkinton boys swept six different events in their 99-37 win over Ashland. Tommy Bernardin won the long jump and high jump with PRs in both. And Aiden Morin took first place in shot put and discus for the Hillers. In the girls track and field match with Ashland, Kate Powers won shot put and discus. Haley Tolson won the long jump 100 meter and anchored the four by 100. Olivia Jones won the 800 meter. Autumn Tumbleton won the mile and set a new record. Bridget O'Connor also came up with a win. Grace Prucher and Ellie Driscoll finished tied in the 100 meter hurdle. Chloe Johnson won the javelin. Bethel Flanagan took second in the 800 meter. And Hopkinton came up with a 110 to 22 win over Ashland. Hello, everybody, and welcome into this segment of HCAM Sports Talk. Joining us on the show. We have Andy Barron from MyFM 101.3. You can hear him every Saturday on their Sports Buzz program, which starts at 11 a.m., goes till 1 p.m. And then we also have Jared Keene from the Metro West Daily News. Guys, how are you? Good. How are you, Tom? Good, Tom. How are you? And I also will be on this week as well. I'll be on the afternoon drive from 4 to 6. So if you, if you really like hearing me, you'll have plenty of opportunities to hear me. <laughs> Oh, you, you got a big listenership when you're on, so you, uh, I don't blame them. <laughs> you're, you're a popular one, man. I, I guess, Definitely. I, I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> but uh, I can't complain. The weather is beautiful. Spring sports is in full swing. 
We're as busy as ever here at H Camp. Games all week long, uh, but it has certainly been fun. And um, the weather is just unbelievable. So the games have been great. And uh, we'll have a whole lot more coverage coming up on HCAM. Be sure to check out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our social media pages for our upcoming broadcast schedule. Jared, you cover any good games lately? Um, I've seen uh, I've seen a few. Um, I haven't seen too many good ones. I've seen a lot of uh, <laughs> blowouts, but uh, <laughs> definitely been uh, definitely been trying to get out there. I. Uh, seen some Algonquin girls lacrosse. I saw some DS boys lacrosse against Topkinton last weekend. Um, I covered Hopedale softball, um, Hoppington wrestling, just kind of been bouncing around. Yeah. Again, they've, they've all been kind of blowouts. I'm waiting, still yeah. waiting for a really good one, but the DS game didn't go so well, did it? That I mean, you know, game. I know Hoppington uh, <laughs> hadn't had many practices in before then. And DS is obviously pretty good this year. So. The thing I've realized is some you get some teams that are just so young uh, that haven't really played together since last spring was canceled, and you yep. can kind of tell that they're rusty. Yeah, yep. and, and I think that applies to pretty much every school in some type of way. I think every school at least has one team that really hasn't played together at all. So even even the ones that are used to playing together and that do are usually pretty good. You know, they got to even shake off a little bit of rust. You know, teams like DS Boys Lacrosse, who I think actually lost their first game. You know, teams like LS Boys Lacrosse, who probably had to shake off some rust, things like that, you know, so. Right. But uh, I think as the season goes on, those teams will get uh, better and better for sure. Absolutely. But anyways, we have a number of things we'll talk about today. Uh, the Bruins, nice win uh, last night over the Washington Capitals. Uh, in overtime, Marshan does it again. They're up in that series two to one, and I'm feeling really good about the Bruins doing some big things in this postseason. I just think ever since they got t- uh, Tyler Hall and made that trade, they have just been unbelievable, and I think that might have just set them over the edge. I'm pretty excited about this Bruins team. I think they're going to make a good run. How are you guys feeling about the Bruins so far? Not really surprised. Um I have to disagree a little bit. I, I think they're really going to struggle in this series. I just think the Capitals – last night I think saved their season because I think the Capitals and the Bruins are actually very similarly matched. They've struggled with this team a lot, and it's not going to get easier. Even if they get by Washington, you've got either the Penguins or the Islanders. This is just not the draw that the Bruins, I, I think, needed. I, I just – yes, Taylor Hall is a great player. There's no question about it. He changes the team. But – I just still think there's something missing from this team. Listen, they've been knocking on the door now for a, since really since 2011. They've been to three Stanley Cups. They should have at least won another one. This team is not getting younger. They're getting older. And I just, I, I don't know. I just don't like the matchup and the direction of the team. And here's the other thing. Do you really trust Tuka Rask? Honestly. I mean... I don't. He made some. He made some great saves last night, man. Again, I don't. I don't I'm not the biggest Tuka guy either, but he made some. He made some saves last night that really kept us in the game. I mean, because there were times last night where they really were taking it to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I guess if I'm going to keep going, I agree with Andy, Tom. I uh, I think this is a tough one for the Bruins. I and I also think last night was huge in terms of probably saving their season. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, there's there's times where you watch the games. And the Capitals are just taking it to us. Pressure, 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 constant. And I don't know if our defense can really handle their forwards. You know, Tuca made some unbelievable saves last night. I mean, that game could have been that game could have been out of hand pretty early. You know, I mean, obviously we kind of turned it on a little bit. And um, go for it, Andy. Jared, does this team rem- does this Washington team remind you of that St. Louis team? Strong. A little bit. Physical, yes. they gave the Bruins, but not score. necessarily with the goaltending. They, they don't. I mean, B- Bennington was out of his mind for the Blues. But but but, know, the, but the big the 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 strength and the size yes. of the Blues yes. were so much bigger than the Bruins, and it wore them down. And yeah. I and, and I listen. I do think the Bruins are going to win this series, but it wouldn't shock me. It's if not going to be easy. 
No, yeah. and it wasn't. And here's another question. I got. Is there a such thing as an easy series, though, in the Stanley no. Cup playoffs? I mean, come on. No, no, it's not like the NBA or whatever, Tom. But and one more question I got. If they do so, so if they do lose this series, is Bruce Cassidy on the hot seat? Because I don't know. I'm getting. I don't, to- I don't think. I don't necessarily think so. I think you got. I think you got to give him at least one or two more seasons. I mean, he's done a nice job. I I get that. I certainly don't think he would be as much on the hot seat as Brad Stevens. That's for sure. Well, Brad Stevens isn't going um, anywhere. You know, I mean, well, Stevens is likely. Gone. I think Brad Stevens Anything's- could be on the hot seat. Really. There's a lot of – I mean, if the Celtics go one and done, I mean, there's so many players in that locker room that I don't think really respect Stevens. Uh, but as far as Cassidy, I think he's well-liked by the team. He's obviously proven that he's an effective coach. And, you know, even in the year they went to the Stanley Cup against the Blues, I still thought they went further than anybody expected. I did not expect them to even get there, and they almost won the series. They probably should have won that series. Sure. Yeah. Uh, no, I agree. I didn't even expect him to get to that point. And I think uh, that really did a lot for Cassidy. And uh, I think he, I think his job's safe. I don't think he's on the hot seat. I mean, if they go into next year, let's say they lose this series and they have a bad year next year and they get the eighth seed or, you know, don't even make the playoffs, then maybe he's on the hot seat. But I don't think anything that happens this year is going to put him there. Well, he looks, I think he is a good coach. And I think he, he doesn't really take a lot of nonsense from people. And that's why I kind of like him. He's not a yes man. You hear him talk, he will call players out. And I, so I think he's a good yep. coach. But I'm just saying, to coach in this market, it is so tough. It's like, what have you done for me lately? That's the attitude we have. Um, no, I don't think he will lose his job. But, you know, I don't know. It just, again, I, maybe it's just me. There's just something about this team. I, I just, I don't personally do not think they have enough to win a Stanley Cup. And that's just, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. And, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Cause I've been wrong before, <laughs> but I, I just, I don't know. I, I just don't feel like they're the best team. I'm not saying they're not going to win this series, but I, I just, yeah, I mean, you know, really if I, teams out there. if I got a pick, I'm not picking them to win. I, you know, what I'm saying is I think they have a chance because, of what they did a few years ago. Went all the way to the Stanley Cup against the Blues, almost won the series. I didn't expect it that year. So I never count this team out. Uh, I think this series is going to be tough. I think it could go six or seven games. And then you're going to have a very tough series against a team that you didn't do too well uh, against next with Pittsburgh or the Islanders. Uh, But, you know, I just think that this team has pulled off miracles before. They've gone further than – I've expected before. I think they have potential to do it again, but this is a tough road. I mean, this is going to be sure is. A, a tough yeah. postseason for really everybody. That's, you know, I, I think the thing with the Bruins, I mean, and, you know, you can say this with a lot of teams, but I think specifically with the Bruins, a lot of, I think what um, they do is very matchup based, you know, depending on who they're playing, you know, because um, obviously they match up a lot better with some teams other, rather than others. Um, the Capitals are obviously the team that, you know, they don't necessarily match up well against, but I think they are very evenly matched against in terms of talent, skill, everything. Because you can see as much as the Capitals take it to us, when we flip the switch and get going, we can be tough to stop. Um, you know, and you see that with some of the shifts that our lines put in. You know, the Bergeron line came on last night and immediately gave us a boost after we had been peppered for, you know, probably a good five five minutes straight. Um you know, and, and we have a lot of talent. We have a lot of skill. But again, I think we do have a lot of weaknesses and that can be ex- those can be exploited um, right. again, just based on different matchups like the Capitals forwards who are big, tough, physical, um, have a lot of skill. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if we have enough to win a cup, but we'll see. You know, again, we've all been wrong before. So I think it's also, I think it's also imperative, too, that they try to close out this Capitals team early. Because the longer this series go, it's not going to benefit the Bruins because they're, they're absolutely. Because when you got to go and play the Islanders and Pittsburgh, and then if you get by those, now you're looking at maybe playing Vegas or I mean, it just they got to save your energy. That's for sure. Yeah, the yep. more games that you play, I just don't think benefits them, especially especially at the, at their age. But um, it's going to it's going to be critical to see what they do coming up in games three and four. You'll be back in the Garden, um, but but if if you split. I don't know. I mean, it's still, it's tough because you still get the, if there's a game seven, it's in Washington. 
And it's, yep. it, you know, it's, I think, I think Jared really hit the nail on the head here. I think these teams are both very evenly matched, they, but it's just, we'll see what happens. Absolutely. It should be a lot of fun. That's for sure. I think it's going to be a very competitive Stanley cup playoffs and, uh, obviously, you know, the one thing I've realized about the Stanley Cup playoffs, absolutely anything is possible. No doubt. Uh, even an eighth seed going to the Stanley Cup and winning the Stanley Cup is possible. So, per- Personally, my favorite playoffs. Absolutely. NHL playoffs. No question that in the NFL. And, yeah, like that Edmonton Oilers team, I think in 2006, they were yep. an eighth seed. I think they went to game seven in the Stanley Cup. So Tom's sure absolutely did. right. It, it can happen. No doubt about it. All right, then it was what the LA Kings a few years ago. They were an eighth seed going to the Stanley Cup. Oh, just what, yeah. yeah. Uh, so anything's possible, and I think the uh, NHL Stanley Cup playoffs is definitely the most unpredictable playoffs out of the four big sports for sure. Real quick, lastly, before we move on, I actually, and again, I'm not the biggest Tuca guy, but the way I've seen him play, uh, you know, minus that, you know, fluky sort of goal last night that ended up getting through. I like our goaltending right now. You know, I've seen a lot. Tuka make a lot of really, really quality saves. And I like Swayman as well. I mean, obviously, if Tuka has to be pulled or whatever, or, you know, has to come out or they decide to put Swayman in, I feel good about that. Is there a chance that he does get pulled? Is there a chance they go with Swayman? I mean, I don't know. Probably not right now. But I'm just telling you, now that the series has shifted to Boston, if Rask starts going down, he's going to start hearing it. Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? So does and Bruce, Bruce will be quick before. to make that switch, you know, yeah. get, try to get us the hot hand, you know, get somebody in there. Yeah. After last year, the leash can't be too big with Tuca. No. Uh, but so far, so good. He's been playing pretty well. And for the most part. Keeping him in yeah. these games for the most part. Right. But um, hopefully he'll keep playing well because I think they certainly need him. And I think uh, he is uh, certainly – a good enough goaltender to get you where you want to go if he's on his A game. Yep. Uh, but he seems to be locked in a lot more than he was last year, so that's a good sign. Yep. But another thing I want to talk about on the show today, the Patriots schedule recently came out. They're kicking off the season on Sunday, September 12th, a 425 game against the Miami Dolphins. Who's going to be the quarterback? Will it be uh, Mac Jones against Tua? Will it be Cam Newton against Tua? We shall see. It's probably going to be Cam for week one. But then week two, they got the Jets, a one o'clock game. Jets obviously have a new quarterback as well. And then Saints week three, one o'clock game. And no Drew Brees for that one as he is retired. And then guess what? Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers – Come to Gillette for Sunday Night Football on October 3rd at 8.20 p.m. start. And then after that, you got the lowly Texans in week five, week six, Cowboys, a 4.25 game there. And, of course, uh, you can check out the rest of the schedule uh, on your own time. But I want to talk about uh, some of these matchups that they got. I mean, looking at this schedule off the top of my head, you know, they're obviously better than last year. They spent a ton of money in free agency. I really liked what they did in the draft. I thought they were aggressive. I thought it was great that they got Mac Jones. I thought they got some good defensive pieces and they got some uh, positions of need for sure in the draft. I've loved what they've done all off season, but it's a pretty tough schedule. I mean, also featured on the schedule, you got what looks like an improved Browns team. In week 10 on uh, November 14th, you got the Titans on uh, November 28th. And, of course, you got the AFC East champion uh, Buffalo Bills a couple times during the season, week 13 and week 16. Yep, two times in three weeks. That's going to yeah. be, that's that's gonna gonna be, be pretty tough. Spicy. One of those games is on Monday night, too. And then yep. you're going into your bye, which is the Patriots have a – this is the latest I've ever seen them have a bye. Week 14 yep. is a bye. Week 14. Right. And of course, you got the extra week this year since there's 17 games now. Um, you close out the season against the, well, you got the Jags and then you got the Dolphins, which I think Miami is probably going to take a step up this year. I think they'll be a pretty tough team, but I, I still don't really trust Tua. Uh, he hasn't really shown me much. Um, but pretty tough schedule. I mean, I look at this and off the top of my head, I'm saying, you know, 11 and six, 
something like that, 10 and seven. Um, I'd imagine that they'll finish above 500. At least I hope they would after all the money they spent. It's a tough schedule, but I think it's a very winnable schedule in some ways as well. Uh, how are you guys uh, feeling about this schedule? And I'll just say right now, I think Tampa Bay is going to crush them, but that's just me. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I can tell well, about a month or two ago, I would have said the same thing, but I'm not feeling that way right now. I think that the Patriots and Belichick, they are going to throw the kitchen sink at Tom Brady. I'm telling you right now. This is going to be a Super Bowl type of environment at Gillette Stadium. It is because I'm telling you, Tom Brady is going to get applauded. I don't think there's any doubt about it. But once that game starts, they ain't going to be applauding him, okay? Because if he throws a pick or something, that place is going to explode. I'm telling you. Oh, absolutely. You start getting in his face, he's a different player. And, and, and he's easier, easier said than done, okay? But I'm just telling you, nobody knows him better than Belichick. Now it's it's and it's the same around. He knows Bill too. But I'm just saying, I, I I just I think the Patriots will be three and zero going into that game. I think Tampa Bay will be too. Listen, you can beat the Dolphins, okay? You can beat the Jets. The Saints are going to have Jameis Winston probably. I don't fear him. I mean, and, and that game's here. I, I just um, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, nobody. Wait, do they really still have Jameis Winston? Yeah, yeah. You don't think they'll start Taysom Hill? Uh, not, it's not what I'm hearing. I think I'm hearing it's going to be Jameis Winston, which I – I mean, Taysom Hill scares me more than Jameis Winston. I agree. You know? I'd be surprised if it's not Taysom Hill. Yeah, well, I don't know. Again, that's that's what I'm hearing. But, listen, you know, I, I just – I think Cam is the starter. I don't. I still don't think Mac Jones or Brian Horry is going to start. And I said this before I came on. I think Stidham's the on man out. I think he's done. I mean, why would they resign Brian Hoyer? You're not going to keep a keep someone on a practice squad. That's not going to happen. But but and then um and then this too. You know, how about when Cam Newton, if he's still the starter, they go back. They go to Carolina this year. How's that going to be? Hey, you know, Cam Newton is two and zero oh in his career against Brady. Yes. And in the last time he was up here, he outplayed Tom Brady. Okay, whether mm-hmm. or not you want to admit it or not, I remember watching that game. He outplayed him. He did. Right. That was sure game with the controversial holding call. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying the facts are the facts. I'm not saying that, you know, um, Cam Newton is, is he's not better than Tom Brady, and I'll, I'll never say that. There's only one Tom Brady, but I'm just saying, I think that Week Four game is, is, um, it's going to be one of the most watched games of all time. Oh, definitely. But the prices of these tickets, yeah. are absurd. If you're trying to go to this game, good luck. Uh, good luck. You know, luck. the 300 okay. section is what, $1,300? That's, that's just right now, that. guys. What's that going to be like before game time? Double it easily. Oh, yeah. Easily. Maybe even more. And um, But I, I listen, I, I agree with Tom. I think a, a 10 and 7, 11 and 6 is not out of the possibility. And here's the other thing I want to mention, too. There are some rumors starting to circulate around here, and I don't know if this is going to happen or not, but I've been hearing that the number one destination – for Julio Jones is the Patriots. That would be a great pickup. And they, it, if they get Julio Jones, they're a top contender in the AFC. You, you know what's funny, know. Andy? That was just in my mind. I was actually just about to say the exact yeah. same thing. Um, you know, again, I'm hearing the talk about, you know, if Julio Jones gets traded, I think it's probably to here. Patriots. You know, and I, I think we needed to make that move. Uh, <laughs> that's almost really creepy that you actually brought that up. Because, uh, again, that was the first thing yeah. on my mind. Yeah. But I agree with you guys. I think 11 and 6 isn't out of the question this year. 10 and 7, um, you know, I'd say if we really struggle, maybe 9 and 8. Um, you know, 12 and 5 would be maybe a little bit surprising. Um, but I think anything below 9 and 8 would be also be pretty surprising. If we go like 8 and 9 or something, I think that would be a little ridiculous. Um, you know, granted, everybody's healthy. But, yeah, I mean, again, I don't see too many really, really, really difficult – games on our schedule again maybe we'll lose some that we shouldn't lose um or we might even beat there's usually one or two of those of course of course i mean i mean do you really trust the patriots going down to miami in january no no not a, not a single they've, lost, they've got super bowl teams and they've lost there listen i think they need to get julio jones because he changed i agree i could not agree more with this team they are a contender in the afc if they get him they are i would I wasn't that big on the Nelson Aguilar signing. I know you guys were probably a little bit bigger on that than I was. I still felt that wide receiver was a, a, a position of need for this team. 
in somebody's, you know, either somebody really good in the draft or a big name. Obviously, didn't pick anybody really big name in the draft. But I'll, I'll tell you something though. Think about the speed they would have if they have Julio Jones, Aguilar, and Kendrick Bourne out there. Julio That's Jones. some serious speed. That catch he made against the Patriots in the Super Bowl was insane. This guy is a top-notch receiver. Whether or not I you agree. like him or not, I cannot agree more. How, and he's Cam all, Newton knows him. He's right. been my, he's been my favorite receiver in the NFL for the last couple of years, at least. You have he's a dominant receiver. I mean, of course he changes everything. I mean, I'm not saying he's an all-time great, but he's he is a very very. He doesn't always get in the end zone, and he's had oh, his yeah. injury issues. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, staying healthy, but yeah, I mean, when this guy is healthy and playing at a, t- at a high level, yeah. he's tough to make he's tough to tough to guard. Make the move. You got nothing to lose. Okay, yeah, definitely. I agree. I couldn't agree more, Andy. Couldn't and, couldn't agree. And more. Atlanta's got nothing to lose either because I don't think they're going to be very good. So, oh, and here's the other thing: if they get Julio Jones, we go to Atlanta this year. Oh my goodness! Oh, that would be just the storyline. Here's what worries me is. Here's what worries me is the fact that Atlanta drafted a quarterback. Are they going to want to let their top wide receiver asset probably go because they drafted a quarterback? I don't know. I mean, and here's the other thing. There are some incredible storylines developing in the NFL this year. Of course, Brady and coming back to the Patriots. Although, wait, didn't they also draft Kyle Pitts, though? Yes, they did. So they have Kyle Pitts and Justin Fields. Yeah, I mean, well, I think the Falcons are probably going to be looking to be rebuilding soon. I mean, Matt Ryan is getting older, too. So, I mean, I don't know. I just – I think it makes sense for both teams. I mean, you just really got to look at it. And don't forget, they play Atlanta. It's a short week, too. Um, I think it's later in the season. But the, the, some of the storylines are just really compelling in the league this year. And who knows where Aaron Rodgers is going. Um, I can tell you right well, now – Well, Rodgers, didn't he announce retirement? I saw recently he announced retirement. No. No. What, I must Definitely have seen this or something. I could have sworn I saw he announced retirement. I'm hearing he – that the Broncos could be the front runner, the Raiders, yep. uh, the Saints, maybe. Um, but here's no way he's going back to Green Bay. It's over now. It's over. He's not. Uh, I guess by the way, that Atlanta game is on a short week after we yeah. play the Browns. We got the Browns, and then on a Thursday, we play Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, here's a trade that just happened. The Jaguars are dealing cornerback Josiah Scott to the Philadelphia Eagles in exchange for quarterback uh, Jamison Houston and a 2023 six round pick. Mm, who cares? Supported by Adam <laughs> There you go. Just, just a, a trade that happened while we were on air. So why not? I tell you, um, I don't know who any of those players Tom, are. Tom Nappy, we're live reporting. <laughs> just real quickly, too, about the Jaguars. But Urban Meyer is getting hammered by the press. Just yep. with the hires he's doing and the fu- – there's many people that don't – there's some people that think he's not going to last the season. How do you guys think Tim Tebow is going to do at tight end? Oh, I totally forgot about that. There are a lot of players <laughs> that are not happy about that. They are I'm, not happy about him signing because they say he's a distraction. Yep. You know, and it's yep. just, oh, man, the Jaguars come here in December. That That is going to be. What I don't get is why didn't Tebow try playing tight end nine years ago? He probably why, why is he just doing it now? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine, man. I mean, what? didn't the Broncos want him to move to tight end when they had him all those years ago? And he just they, he wouldn't do did. it? Yeah, it just. What are they doing down? I mean, it is like a circus down there. I mean, and a lot of players are not happy about it. They just look at I don't think he's a bad guy. It's just, I don't know. Wherever he goes, he draws a crowd. I mean. You got to feel for Trevor Lawrence, I think, in this situation. Trevor Lawrence, the number one pick in the draft, is going into basically a, a firestorm of a, of a, you know, I mean. He's like, what did I get Tim myself Tebow into and here? Meyer and, oh, exactly. I mean. Boy, that, I, I'm just, I don't know. And again, I've said this before. Nick Saban couldn't even turn the Dolphins around. It is so rare that a college coach can jump to the NFL and win. Can you name me one coach who has done it? I, I can't. He couldn't even turn the Browns around, and he had Belichick with them. I mean, it just, what what coach has, really? I, I, don't, I, think, I think Jacksonville is just going to be horrible again. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in trouble, man. I don't know. Well, I don't, it's too early. You don't really are know. They, are they in more trouble than the Texans, though, who are going to be no, absolutely no brutal one's this in year? No, no trouble than The Texans them. are so bad. I mean, they seriously could go one in, like 1-15. in 15. I mean, because there's no way Deshaun Watson's playing. I mean, he's not playing there. No. Just, so I don't like, think 
they might not win a game. I they may not. The Patriots are going there. If they can't beat the Texans, we have problems. <laughs> and I don't know what it is. They they but they always have struggle there for some reason. I don't know what it is, but there is no way we're that bad of a team. I mean, that could be your sleeper game. You know, you, you have that big game against uh, the Bucks. That's Maybe true, you Tom. keep it close with Brady. Maybe you even win. And then you go to Houston and you're you're just awful. You get rolled you know like 40, forty-two to zip. That'd be <laughs> that, but that wins. yeah, that could be a huge letdown game. I didn't even really think of that, but I mean, but Watson will not be the quarterback there. There's there's going to be no. so much outrage if he is. I mean, no, it ain't happening. No, I mean he might not even be a free man in a few weeks. Yeah. Oh. With what's happening to him? Oh, it's terrible. I mean, just to think that the Patriots were seriously considering getting him. And he's a, a lot of teams people. were. Patriots were the only ones. Yeah. I think Aaron Rodgers would go to the Texans. I mean. Uh, no, I no. don't. I, I think Aaron Rodgers probably has very few teams he would go to. I think on his list, there was what? The Raiders, the Broncos. Yep. Yep. And that was about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was. The 49ers, maybe? No, but I mean, obviously I don't think that's going to happen. It's not happening. Now now. They have Trey Lance. Well, he is a California guy, right? So yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, that that isn't going to happen. And uh, you know, that really, there's, yeah. there's only and I, and I have thrown this team out there too as as a wild card, the Miami Dolphins. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, with, we don't know with Tua. I mean, he's he's very injury prone, and if they have an opportunity to get Aaron Rodgers, why wouldn't you do it? I mean, they have been trying to place Dan Marino for years. They still haven't done it. I mean, they're desperate. Really, if you really think about it, in a way. I mean, but I, I'm sorry. I don't want Aaron Rodgers here. He, not after what he's done. You can't. You can't I'd take him. No, I mean, I know he's a drama queen, but I would still take him because I still think he's better than your two options right now, Newton or Mac Jones. He probably is, but I just think this is too much. The, the contract, the distractions. No. Yep. Right. I don't think they're going to do it. I no. think it's too much money. And um, I think distractions I'm, aside, I'd take him in a heartbeat. Anybody would. But right. again, I think Andy's right with the distractions. I don't know if you take him right now. You know what I mean? Obviously, Belichick doesn't like distractions. Unless you have- um, he doesn't put up with that crap. So, yeah, I mean, he's obviously far better than our options. But again, he's got the you know distractions. And I think that keeps him from coming here. Pretty much unless you have Pat Mahomes or Tom Brady you should be considering it. Yeah. Another, another thing to get back to is uh, 10 one o'clock games this year for the Patriots. When was the last time they had 10 one o'clock games? I can't even remember. So that kind of oh. shows you that uh, you know, the NFL and the media is not really high on this Patriots team. Yep. Well, I'll tell you what, they start off, you know, four and oh, five and oh, you're going to see some flex games for sure. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And don't forget, you got the Bills on Monday night. That's yep. later in December. Isn't um, that their only Patriots- Monday night game, though? That's their only Monday night game. Well, only one Sunday night game and one Monday night game. And you have a lot of one o'clock games. I mean, I don't think they flex the Miami game or the Jacksonville game, or maybe that other later Buffalo game might. It all it all depends. I'm surprised we're playing Miami at 4:25 on on week one. I just I was yeah. a little surprised about that. But the Browns and the Chiefs play at 4:25 week one too. That's gonna be a good game. That will be a good game. That'll you know, be a good that, game. that game's on the on the, the side with us, but. Listen, I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready for this season. I want to see what they can do. Um, you know, we don't know if Mac Jones is going to get in. I, I still think there's a possibility he could. But I honestly, I'd be very, very surprised if he starts week one. I, I just really, I, I just don't think Bill's going to do it. I mean. No, I don't either. I think it'll be no. Newton week one. Uh, and if Newton starts to struggle, though, I think he'll pull the p- plug pretty quick. Yeah, I think he will. Oh, yeah. I think short leash. Too. Short leash. And, oh, definitely. And, I, and I think it's the right thing because, you know, let's face it. I mean, Cam Newton is probably not going to play that much longer, but I also think you've got to cater the offense to him. And I just don't think they did that last year. He's yeah. got better players around him now. So let's see what we can do. I mean, let's not make this thing complicated. And this is why I get so sick of Josh McDaniels makes things too complicated. All right. Just, you got to cater to the guy. Simple, smart. simple. Keep it simple for him. I mean, and listen, Cam Newton's a tough guy to bring down. He's a big guy. Oh, like, definitely. Realize how big he was. That's why he's such a successful running quarterback. Yeah. He, he is not easy to bring down. Oh. He, he is a monster. And, you oh. know, if they ever did go to Mac Jones, I think Cam Newton would still be involved in the offense. Yes, he will. He would be he, in a – He will. Cap here's, here's what I'll say. I mean, is it – how how much uh, – What do, I mean, what, do I, what am I trying to ask here? I think – 
you know, because I think obviously the the offense catered to Cam Newton is going to be vastly different than what the offense would be catered to Mac Jones. Mm-hmm. You know, Mac Jones doesn't quite have the wheels that Cam Newton does. Blah blah blah. How much does that affect us? You know, is that something that we're like, if we have the offense catered to Cam, and then we put Mac in? I mean, are we going to be seeing a vastly, vastly different offense? And I mean, how is that going to go down? You know, I mean, that's that worries me a little bit. I mean, because again, I think the way you have often you have to play offense in the field with Mac Jones is going to be a lot different than with Cam Newton. Of course, you know, just yeah. in terms of the way McDaniel's has to do things. So, well, I'll tell you this. I mean, look at what they signed in the in free agency with John and Smith and Hunter Henry. Right. When you're when you're getting two tight ends like that and spending all kinds of money on them. That means you're going to have an offensive strategy that's going to involve a lot of short passes. Yeah. And I think you're going to see a whole lot of that either way with either of the quarterbacks. With Jones, or you're right. You're probably right, Tom. Yeah. I mean, I think they're going back to kind of a nickel and dime kind of offense, nickel and dime your way up the field. And they do have speed. They got some speedy receivers and Aguilar and Bourne. Aguilar doesn't have the best hands, but he is fast. And, it, you know, He's able to make a catch up field. He's picking up some good yards after the catch. Kobe Myers, too. All right. You still got him. You lost Demir Bird. He's gone. But, you know, your receiver, like I said, if they added Jones, it changes everything. That That would be be a game changer. Higher offense. Oh, definitely. Because your running game's already solid. I think your O line should be pretty good. You know, Cam, again, we're just going to have to wait and see. I mean, listen, I'm not crazy about maybe him starting either. He's better than Brian Hoyer, okay? I mean, of course. Let's, yeah. let, okay, so let's just – and listen, you know, again, Jared Stidham's the odd guy out. I don't see any way how he's back. I mean, it's just Mac Jones is the future. It's not Jared Stidham. I mean, let's let, let, let's face it. And um, But I'm excited if, if Mac Jones does play because that is your future. There's there's no doubt about it. And I just kind of feel like he's got this, this kind of this R already about him. I don't know. Like, you know, Mac, Mac Jones, like people already call him Big Mac. And I don't know. It just, <laughs> he seems like he's a, um, Big he Mac. Just, oh, he's got a lot of talent, man. Let me tell you. He's, he does. I, I think it was a good pickup. And I think Mac they've been, uh, scouting yeah. him for quite a while. And obviously, uh, Belichick has a lot of connections down there at Alabama. So I think, um, he probably got Mac Jones probably got some high praise from uh, Belichick's buddies down in Alabama. So, uh, I mean, obviously with these, you know, with these quarterbacks in the first round, a lot of them work out good, but some of them don't, you know, I mean, a lot of people thought Tua was going to be unbelievable and dominant and he was going to just be unstoppable in Miami. And he hasn't really shown much of anything. In fact, Fitzpatrick outperformed them last year, you know, so who knows what you're going to get from Tua, who knows what you're going to get from Trevor Lawrence down in Jacksonville. I mean, that team's a mess. They did pick up some pieces, but as I mean, I think you'll know what you're going to get from Trevor Lawrence. It's just what you're going to get from everybody else on Jacksonville. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is the real deal. I don't think there's any question about that, you know, but again, it's what everybody else on Jacksonville can do around him. He probably wishes he was, he got drafted by the Patriots now. (laughs) He probably wishes he was drafted by any team, but Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Yeah. I mean, and don't forget either guys. And I I, I think I might've mentioned this, but maybe the Texans. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. If Cam Newton plays in that Carolina game, you don't mean to tell me he's not going to be fired up for that. I mean, it's not like it's not like on the level of Brady coming back here, but I think he's going to be a little ticked off going back there. I mean, and I don't know if he'll get booed or whatnot, but it did not end really well for him there either. So that could be another another storyline later in the season. I mean, yeah. he's going to want to dominate that game. That's what I'm saying. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of compelling storylines are, are developing. None is going to be bigger than Brady coming back to Fox Pro. No, I don't no, know if no. you'll ever see anything like that again, honestly. No. Um, but wouldn't it be something if the Patriots win that game? Like, I would – see, guys, listen. Brady already won the Super Bowl. I mean, I know he wants to win the game, but really, I think the game's bigger for the Patriots. I really Agreed. Do. Very much agreed. Definitely. I don't think there's any question about that. Yeah, I mean – I don't think Tampa fans to win. care about it as much as Patriots fans, for sure. They've already won the Super Bowl. Right. Yeah. Tampa Bay's already the favorite. They're They're already – probably going to go to the Super Bowl in the NFC. I don't see any team that can beat them. I just think the game means more for the Patriots. They're just trying to find their identity again. It's like, you know, but and Brady, the only team he hasn't beaten is the Patriots because he's played here his whole career. 
I mean, of course he wants to win. Absolutely. There's nobody who wants to win more than Tom Brady. I just think the game means more to the Patriots, and they will throw the kitchen sink at them. That is it not will. going to be a blowout. Well, it'll go both ways. I think Tampa will throw the kitchen sink as well, and I think uh, Belichick will be throwing the kitchen sink at him. You know Belichick is just foaming at his mouth for that game. He knows Brady, nobody knows Brady better than Bill. I, I mean, right. it just, he knows his weaknesses. He knows – what he likes, he doesn't like. You don't play with somebody for that long. They know each other probably better than anybody, really. I mean, it's going to be a fascinating matchup. I can't wait. None It'll of us be blitzing the whole game. But it's not the season if they don't win it. They don't win the game. It's it's so early in the year. It is. And I have to give I have to give the networks credit for scheduling it this early too, because if you do schedule this later in the year, what if the Patriots are bad? It's not going to have. It's not going to be as compelling. Right. Did the right thing. Oh, yep, definitely. I agree. Again, and the, but what, what's funny though is. If the Patriots go in and win that game, um, they're obviously going to be riding high. They're going to be feeling really good. But then again, don't you play the Texans the week after? Right. So, no, again, that, that's where the whole, like – The big letdown There's, there's game. no way that game against the Texans is going to be a close game. That'll we're, be either the- gonna, we're either going to go in and romp them 42 to zip, or they're going to pound us, you know, because oh. we're going to be, like, we're going to be too cocky, and then that's oh. going to be flat-out embarrassing. That'll we'll be the lost- Texans' one win of the season. Huh. We'll beat the Bucks and then lost to the Texans in a matter of two weeks. How exactly. ridiculous would that be? It happens a lot in the NFL, too. Um, it really does. So I, it, w- it wouldn't shock me. But, yeah, I'm ready for the season. I'm ready for the game. Can't wait for the Tampa game, obviously. Um, yep. You know, the ratings are going to be are going to be unlike probably anything we've ever seen. But I'm telling you, once that game starts, I mean, they're not going to be cheering for Tom Brady, okay? Nope. No. Nope. It, these fans are going to be – it's going to be unlike anything we've probably ever seen. Not that it's going to phase Brady. I mean, really, what does phase this guy? I mean, I'm just saying. But um, I'm just saying, you get in his face a little bit, he starts to, I don't know. He just, he has he has some problems with that, you know, and it's just, we shall see. Definitely. Yep. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to it be, fun. be fun. I, I can't imagine what the atmosphere is going to be like. Oh. It's going to be insane. There's going to be people here at like four or five in the morning if the Patriots win. By I mean, the way, if anyone has affordable tickets, you can contact me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that is going to be definitely the toughest ticket of the season to get anywhere for any regular season game. Oh, yeah. uh, it's going to have Super Bowl like ratings. It already has Super Bowl like ticket prices. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. And I think <laughs> Belichick wants it really bad. I think Brady wants it really bad. And uh, we'll see. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be yep. a battle. Can't wait. And if Aaron Rodgers goes somewhere else and somehow he's going back to Green Bay, that will be a big one too. That will. Right. Maybe not as big, big it won't be as big as this one, but it'll be big. Because I remember when Brett Favre returned with Minnesota, like, oh, man, those yep. moves were just – I literally – It was all the talk. That was all the talk. I couldn't believe it, though. Like, I could not believe how loud it was on my TV. I mean, there was yep. batteries flying. You could see, like, beer flying. Like, I don't think it's, it's not going to be like that here, but – that was epic. I mean, honestly, it was. Wow. That was very and, you know, epic. Favre going to the Vikings, that would have been like Brady going to the Jets. He he no. went to the ultimate. Yeah, he went to the Jets, I mean, he went to the Buccaneers. You're right. If he went to the Jets or the Dolphins, yeah, right. that would have been different. That would have been bad. That would have been bad. Uh, I'm but. glad he didn't because there's no way I could ever just root for the Jets. No. What, no. Moving on, what, what, what chances do you guys give the Celtics tonight against the Weather Wizards in the play-in game? Uh, I, I'm giving them maybe 25%. This guy's not very crazy. high. I think they're a mess. This <laughs> team is a disaster. What is wrong? I mean, this is oh, embarrassing. Boy. This is horrible. They need to revamp this entire team enough. I've seen enough. You lost to the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are a terrible team a few nights ago, whenever it was. Horrible. I give Brutal. the Golden State Warriors a, a, a chance to beat the Lakers in that play-in game. Oh, definitely. You, you, you never, have to. ever can count out Clay Thompson and Steph Curry. I mean, they might be the best two shooters I've ever seen. Are they right? Steph there. Curry is playing out of his mind right now. That by the way, that he, what he's done recently is absolutely ridiculous. I would love absolutely the Lakers to get knocked out. That would be great. I would. I wouldn't put it past that the Warriors can't do it. I mean, Steph Curry is outside of Larry Bird might be one of the best shooters I've ever seen. Yep. I mean, it's can just- the Warriors defend though? Will the Warriors be able to defend? But the Celtics, I mean, Jalen Brown being out is tough. Yeah, um, I like some of the pieces. I don't know if they can comp- have to completely revamp the roster, but I think they do have to revamp part of the roster. 
maybe even consider making a coaching change. It may be. I'm not saying definitely, maybe. And uh, of- again, they, they just have to figure some things out. They got to get some more leadership. They got to get some things going. Again, are you looking for Tatum or Brown for leadership? What do you mean? I know Marcus Smart is kind of that guy, very vocal, obviously, but something has to be done here. I mean, this is this is unacceptable, especially if you go out and get absolutely rolled tonight by the Wizards. Yeah, Jared, that's a great point. I've been hearing that a lot of players are getting tired of Marcus Smart, and that's not good because no. like, he's, he's a good player. There's something, there's something that's not adding up there. And uh, Jalen Brown, I thought, had a pretty good year, but – attitude that's the thing where is the leadership okay and here's the other thing why did they get rid of daniel tice i think he was a pretty i don't know decent player granted really decent all pro i thought he was tough and the players liked him he 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 filled a role he he filled a role he sure did did that role at a fairly high level i think you're a better team with him to be honest with you Um, i agree i don't like the tristan chops i just this team just needs they're a mess. They are a disaster. They're a mess. I don't want them to really win. They need they need to to hit a rock bottom, and I don't know if they have. And Danny Ainge has taken a lot of a lot of criticism too. I mean, they they just they have an attitude problem, and I think it goes throughout the NBA. Listen, I like Brad Stevens. I think he's a nice guy, but they're not moving on from him. I mean, not not from anything that everything that I've heard. They're, they're keeping him. I, I'm just saying. I mean, I guess what is the alternative? Who who would right. replace him? I mean, there's really – Go get Doc Rivers back. He's available. As I'd hire Eric Spolstra. <laughs> hey, Doc, Doc Rivers is coaching the top team in the in the, in the the Eastern Conference right now. I mean, you know? Yeah. I get Eric Spolstra. That's who I go after. It's been tough to even pay Ted. I don't even think Eric Spolstra would even consider coming to Boston. No, no, he wouldn't. Of course not. He's got it made where he is. I'm just saying, you know, it's boy, this has been – what a terrible, terrible season for this team. And uh, fans are getting tired of it, and I don't blame them. I mean, yep. they should not be in this position. This team should be fighting for an Eastern Conference crown. I can accept that. I can accept that they lose. Okay, they lose in the Eastern Conference Finals. It is what it is. Okay, um, but you shouldn't be having to play in the play-in game. This should this no. team should not be in the play-in game. No, yeah, and especially no. when you looked at the roster at the beginning of the season, you said no. you know they, they'll probably get like a three seed, four seed, maybe, like yeah. Bit. But they're just a train wreck. They're four and six in their last ten. They're just not playing well at all. Um, I think I think the Wizards are going to beat them uh, uh, tonight. I just think that I think they are going to hit the rock bottom tonight by losing to the Wizards. Well, but even if they well, win this, they're not going anywhere. Oh, they're not going to do anything. If, if Russell Westbrook comes out and puts up like fifty points, twenty rebounds, and fifteen assists, I mean, like, no, they're not. I, it's kind of sad to think that I actually want them to kind of lose. It is. It is. I think they need to experience this. They and do. Is this I agree. No, I agree. Up. If this doesn't wake them up, then I don't know what will. And then if they – let's say if they win, they go against the Brooklyn Nets. Please. Good luck with that one. Give me, give me a break. The They're not beating the Nets. Not happening. You know, it's getting swept are, in four yeah, easily. Yeah, it's just it's – just that's a complete, you know, waste of our time, honestly. I mean, the Nets are, and I, I can't, I hate, I can't stand the team, but they have no shot. I mean, yeah. So what? And say we lose tonight, and then we beat, um, you know, we beat the winner of the other play-in game. Then we get the eight seed and have to play the 76ers. Same thing. They're not better than the Sixers. Rolled. Yeah. I mean, Doc Rivers is gonna roll oh. all over Brad Stevens. Yeah. No. Yeah. But uh, yes, the Sixers have. They've had some weird playoff series for some reason. I don't know. The Celtics aren't better than them. I'm just saying. You know, they're, they they always seem like they're missing something. I don't know. Weird team. Yeah, you know? very weird. You Great know, history. I mean, Great history. I, I think there was, you know, as far as the Celtics, I just think there was too much ego in the locker room. Oh, yeah. Uh, the players didn't buy in. I don't think they bought into Stevens. No. And, um, yeah, just too much ego. I, I think that's really what destroyed this team. And, obviously, you had a couple injuries that didn't help. Uh, but I think they need to get some of that ego out of the locker room, maybe go a little younger or something like that, especially with a coach like Stevens. Cause I like Brad Stevens, as you said, I think he's a great guy, but I don't think the veterans really buy into him. He's not a veterans no. coach. The star players don't, they, he can't get the star players to buy in like Greg Popovich can, or, I mean, look, he obviously Kawhi Leonard, you know, left there, but I'm just saying, you're right. Doc Rivers seems to have a better presence 
with um, with the veteran players than Brad Stevens does. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if, if getting rid of him is the answer, though. That's the thing. I just no. I don't think you should get rid of him. I think you need to transition to the type of coach he is. I think you need to yep. go a little bit younger. I think you need to get rid of some of the ego in the locker room. Um, I think, you know, they've done a pretty decent job at drafting guys recently and, and developing younger players. I think that's probably a direction you should start to go in, build, ba- build back uh, this team, you know, go young. Um, I don't know if they, I don't think they should target veterans. And I think, you know, they need to just have a rebuild really. But they need leadership. They need they need leadership that's going to be a voice that everybody's going to respect and listen to, not only on players but with coach as well. You know, and again, I like Brad Stevens, like you guys. I think he's a great coach. But we need somebody that's going to be able to lead this team again, both as a veteran player and again, like Andy and I said, is that Marcus Smart anymore? And they need that from a coach as well. They need that leadership, Mm -hmm. especially because they do have a lot of young guys: Tatum, Brown. Um, Neesmith, Rob Williams, you know, I mean, there, there's a good young core there, but you know, I don't know if the, some of those guys can be counted on like, you know, to provide leadership like Tatum and Brown. Right. You know, and they, they are good players. But what Tatum is 22, Brown is 24, you know. Brown yeah. is 25. But yeah, I, I like Brown a lot. I like Tatum a lot. I think those are the guys that kind of got to lean on. I don't know about Marcus Smart. I don't really trust him. Uh, but, yeah, you, you're right. You do need leadership. And I think you got to give Stevens one more year, though. Give him one more year, see if he can turn no. it around. I don't think you want to let the guy go yet because he has had a couple of good years coaching this team. So Three conference finals, yeah. Right. He's done well, but we can't seem to get to that next level. That's That's where, you know, getting to the finals – that would have been a huge step for this team. I would have rather just tanked it and get a lottery pick if I knew it was going to be this bad. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was just – it's such a weird year because it's like you just right. wrapped up the last season, you know, losing to Miami in the Eastern Conference Finals, and then you started this one pretty much right after, a couple of months later. So it's been kind of strange. <laughs> Everything about this year is strange. But anyways, we're just about out of time. So, guys, any uh, final thoughts? Well, we, sorry, Jared. Go ahead. No, I was just to say I think we I think we got it after a lot today. Um, we we hit on a lot of good topics. Yeah, just excited for football. I'm excited for the Bruins. Everything else. If the 76ers do win the NBA championship, it would be their first since 1983. Yep. We had Dr. J, Maurice, Dr. J. Malone. Yep. Be a uh, long time. Almost thirty. Almost forty years. Doc Rivers doing it again. Awesome. Also, congratulations to Kevin Garnett going to the Hall of Fame. And uh, Paul Pierce and Bill Russell will be going in next year. Bill Russell going in as a coach. Kevin Garnett always been one of my favorite players of all time. Yes. Uh, Definitely. Even when he was with the Timberwolves. You want to talk about leadership. There you go. Kevin Garnett, next coach. Bam. Bam. Done. Players respect (laughs) him, too. I didn't even – I wish I thought of that earlier. But seriously, (laughs) I'm not even kidding. I I think he could do it. I think he might see him in a coaching role soon. But in any case, that is going to wrap up this edition of HGAM Sports Talk. For Andy Barron, Jared Keene, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for tuning in. And be sure to tune in every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care. Be well. We'll talk to you again soon.